Okay, so um, the next presentation is going to be given jointly by Heidi Layton of the Department of Marine Resources. She's an area biologist with the Shellfish Management Program. Her coverage area includes Eastern Maine from Mount Desert Island to Cowes. And Bill Zellick, who's an education researcher who works with schools and teachers to connect students with scientific work that matters to their communities. Over the past year, he's been working with Sum Sumner Memorial High School to connect students' science learning with shellfish communities in Gouldsboro and Steuben in order to give the towns a better picture of clam settlement and predation on the clam flats that they manage. He hopes to expand his work so that other schools and towns can collaborate to provide information to the clam fishery while engaging students in authentic science scientific work. And I'm going to introduce the uh, third presenter as well right now, Dawn Staples, because I think this is a shared presentation section. Uh, Dawn is the Searsport District High School science teacher, and she's, I'm really happy to welcome um, several of her students who have come with her, and they're going to help with the presentation, I believe. So it's great to have kids here working on clam science or shellfish science. You just advance by pushing down. Okay. I'm Bill Pollock. Is, is Dan Curtis? No, I didn't see him. Yeah. Okay. They were here. He, he could speak to this too. Um, the title of this is Schools Make a Difference, uh, Making a Difference for Communities in Shell Fishing. The, the framing of that's important because it's, um, first off, I should tell you who I am. I'm, I'm Bill Zollick, I work at the Scudic Institute, and I, I'm an educator and an education researcher. So my, my work is mostly with schools and trying to figure out, in this case, how to have schools. Um, schools are such a big part of everybody's tax bill. Uh, it would be great if they connected to, to the community a lot, and that's part of what I'm, I'm working on here. In this case, uh, the, and, and I guess another question, how many of you folks are on shellfish committees? Just raise hands up. Oh, great. So the, the idea here is, is to really have the schools be connected to the needs of shellfish communities, and that's what I'm going to talk with you about. Um, yes, that would be. So the general situation is that uh, shellfish committees, and I'm, the two shellfish committees I know a good bit about are Steuben and Goldsboro. But I'm going to assume that this is, is that they're not the only ones that need better information, that this, this is a, a general problem. Is, you know, the conditions are always very local. One bay is different than another bay, one cove is different than another cove. So the idea of really getting a better understanding of what you've got out there is something that I know those two shellfish committees are interested in having. And the second issue is, is that schools need a, a better way to uh, engage students in a science that clearly matters. So it isn't just classroom science, it's, it's science where the kids understand why they're doing it and, and get excited about it. So those two things, in general, uh, I, again, speaking about Steuben and Goldsboro, um, those two towns have a, 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 a commitment to uh, active resource management. They, they use nets to protect the resource. They, they buy seed stock. Um, and uh, they happen to have a school that is willing to step out outside the classroom. And, and by that, it's... it's uh, the tides really don't care about the bell schedule. So one of the things that you deal with in the school is, is having the school be willing to understand that kids uh, won't be in a 50-minute uh, period that's always at the same time, and some flexibility in terms of that. And this school has been willing to do that. The other really important resource that I, I can't stress it enough is, is that uh, we had uh, Dan Curtis, who uh, leads the uh, Student Shellfish Committee, and then Mike Pinkham is the shellfish warden for both towns, and then Heidi, uh, willing to try something new. Uh, and having a, having a shellfish warden on board, big deal. Uh, having a committee chair that is willing to um, really, really invest in trying some new things has been a big deal. The other good fortune we have, and I think this is thanks to Mike Pinkham, really. Uh, Mike knew of a uh, an abandoned lobster pound, and knew, I think Mike probably knows most everybody in town. Uh, and uh, he knew the owners and was able to talk them into uh, letting us get access to the pound uh, across their property and, and uh, to use it as a test site. Here you can see the pound. It's a, I don't know when it was built. It's about 300 uh, feet out, couple, 250 feet across. And it used to have a, a gate here that, uh, that we hope, well, what we, I'm sure, 
I'm confident we will. Uh, get something put in back in place so that we can actually uh, manage and, and bury the water level uh, in the pound a bit and, and look at some questions about, about shellfish growth. And then the other thing, and I, 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 know, I know Kyle's here, Kyle and, uh, and Brian Beal, um, as I said, I'm, I'm an educator. I, I don't know a whole lot about plants. And so uh, being able to uh, rely on these folks to, to help us keep ourselves out of trouble has been really important. Hey, and the two folks that have walked in the room, I got two teachers here, uh, uh, Steve Bellia and Susan Walsh, who uh, are also, uh, well, this wouldn't happen without them. Okay, so the goals of this uh, are to help the towns manage the uh, clam resources by gathering data. And the questions that we are focused on, one of the questions I'll be asking you, and I'll you know, come up to talk to me afterwards, and, uh, talk to Heidi is are there other questions that you need, but the questions that we were focused on is where is the settlement most abundant? If we know that it varies a lot from place to place and but we don't know where it is. Uh, the second question is is how fast do they grow? And where is it really fast? Um, as you all know that that has to do with how long you have to keep the nets down in terms of protecting them from the from the predators. And then where's the predation most aggressive? It does seem to vary quite a bit from code to code in these towns. So the, that's, what's, that's what the towns need. And what, the, what the students need is, um, again, work that matters. The students that we're working with are uh, students who are taking a, a, looking at all of these questions. So uh, what Bill Moak was said, talking about interdisciplinary. This is a very interdisciplinary thing. It's, it's the clans. It's also, it's also the, some engineering work, uh, the water. Uh, so, uh, helping them discover that it's, it's not just something that you do because school wants you to do it or because someone else tells you to do it, and it, it's not just for other kids in school, it's stuff that, that, that they can do. So quickly, and I know I'm over this quickly, but there's, um, <laughs> good to know, um, uh, outcomes and things learned. One thing we learned is, is that we, we, we've been able to repurpose this kind of, we're working on it, so it, it, it was a mess. A lot of re re dragged out of it. Uh, here, a, a student named Brittany is we, we really are trying to figure out what the, what the tidal gradient was so that we can actually do some uh, calculations as to how much, how much the, where we put them and how much water coverage we'll have uh, when. So <coughs> students were involved in kind of understanding that, repurposing it. Um, we had, a, uh, again, I, we really didn't come into this knowing a lot of plan science. Uh, so we've got a crash course, uh, and again, thanks to Heidi. Also, uh, again, Donnie's Institute has been so important. Uh, here the kids are uh, helping Kyle uh, seed clams after we harvest and get them to sample them and basically wash them through. This one is, is probably most of you know, this is a hatchery mark, so we're actually able to look at the amount of growth uh, for, for these clams uh, this time. Um, actually, I have a picture here, I think. I want to give you this. So this was the process um, working with Kyle to collect samples, washing the samples, and then uh, bringing them in after they're washed, uh, put them in uh, frozen, uh, and then uh, wash those, uh, uh, wash them, and then measuring them. Uh, kids happily measured uh, things. Uh, okay, great. Uh, tens of you know, thousands, thousands of these things uh, down to down to you know, fractions of a millimeter, so that we actually could work with work with the data. Okay, so uh, outcomes and things learned. Um, and I, the other big part here was we've been going to selfish committee meetings and just listening and, and hearing what hearing the questions that people have. Um, and I, I will say that that for me that was as important as is the data that we have. Um, so we're trying to understand the towns, problems that the towns are trying to address, and I want to I want to call out that this isn't the way the school science normally works. What normally happens is, is that the school decides what the problem is, or someone else decides what the problem is. And that what is important here is that if we're going to serve the community, we actually have to start with their problem, not with our understanding of the problem. We've got to start with what they want to know, not what we think. And what that means is that then we got to adapt and try to figure out how to work that into something so that it does the learning that the students need 
but we don't want to just only do that. It's got to it's got to really start with what's the town need. And here's some things we learned that each cove and bay is different. Uh, Settlements can be good some places, uh, and it can be good where we don't see any clams. So there can be no adult clams, but when we put nets down, we'll see some, and this is again, thanks to Kyle, we're seeing, uh, can see some substantial settlement. Uh, Basin is huge, nets seem to be able to make a difference, and, and the shellfish committees, uh, sitting and listening to the questions, the questions are good and we don't have answers, so so there's a, there's a need here. So for looking ahead to next year, next growing season. Uh, we want to collect and analyze data about growth rate. We wanted to look at um, different mesh sizes. So the nets we used this year were 4.2 millimeters. One of the things that we're also interested in is, is settlement. And one of the questions is, is if we use a bigger mesh size, do we, in, in these codes, do we end up uh, having a, a better settlement rate? So we'll look at that. We'll also be doing some work to try to understand if by regular sampling we can get a handle on green, green crab density and, and life cycle over the season. So those are all things that we'll be wanting to look at uh, during the 2018 growing season. Bigger picture, and, I, I, and this is where I want to spend a little time. The bigger picture is this, from my standpoint, um, I, I live in Goolsboro. It's important to me what's happening in Goldsboro and Sudan, but from the standpoint of my organization, this really becomes meaningful if we can take it to other towns. So what we're looking to here is to have, uh, see if we can develop easy to deploy tools, things easier to deploy than 12 foot by 12 foot nets, and methods where we actually can, in a pretty lightweight, affordable way, enable other towns to get information about settlement and growth in all of their bays and coves. And the uh, goal is, is for other people to use this. And to make this happen, and this is where I, I really want to focus here, um, step number one is to have more shellfish committees know about this. That's why I'm doing the talk. But also to, to have you folks uh, get in touch and, and be interested in, in doing this. I think I'm thinking that this really needs to start from the shellfish committees, not from the towns. And so the, the key thing here is, is that there be, be folks on the shellfish committee that sort of say, yeah, we need this information. Then people like me and folks in the DMR uh, get together with the shellfish committee folks, go out to the schools, talk to them, and, and see if we can <coughs> have, find a way to have that make sense for them, which leads into the other bullets. So to do that in a way that makes it attractive for schools, we need a, a sets of curriculum materials that they can use. Schools are really good. I, want to, I, I work with schools all the time. They've learned that you bring in a new curriculum, stuff like Common Core, a new math textbook, and they're good at getting up to speed on using new stuff. They know how to do professional development for that. They know how to get teachers able to change gears. So we can build on that and use schools' ability to do those things to help them do this kind of sign. So, key part of this then, let's see if I can figure out a, ah, got it. This platform. So, this can't be a bunch of people trying to share things with Google Docs all over the place. We need a common place to do this. And Sarah Kern, are you in the audience someplace? Hey, Sarah, stand up, please. So, Sarah is a colleague of mine from the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. And starting uh, this coming year, and, and hopefully piloting it next year, uh, our organization and will be working with Gulf Maine Research Institute to really try to build uh, a common way for towns to share their data up and down the coast of Maine about settlements and predation. And so this isn't just something that only uh, that, that only Stephen Gilbro knows about, or only Searsport knows about, but uh, this data that are shared. Also, curriculum materials that are shared, ways of teaching that are shared, ways to connect teachers. So all of that really will make this so that, that it works for schools as well as, as well as for towns. So who's working on this? Good Institute, that's my organization. Down East Institute, uh, Gulf Maine Research Institute, I've already talked about them. Of course, the towns, the high school, uh, and then Heidi from Maine Department of Marine Resources and uh, other folks. So I'm gonna close just 
by extending an invitation. And it's an invitation that I'll be around all day, be around tomorrow. Um, if this makes sense to you, if this is something where you feel that you would like to be working with your school to try to collect information about settlement <coughs> and growth, uh, come talk. Uh, as I said, we're really wanting to put in place tools and processes to do this uh, so that it's easy for everybody and that everybody is collecting things the same way and can understand and share the data. Uh, that's my email address. That's my cell phone number. Don't call it now. Is it a ring? <laughs> Heidi? Come, come. I'm a little vertically challenged, so I gotta move this microphone around my face. <laughs> um, so, as Cole said, uh, I am Heidi Layton. I'm the Eastern Maine Area Biologist for the Department in the Shellfish Management Program. And the way that I got involved in this project was when I attended a Stuben Shellfish Committee meeting last spring um, that Dan Curtis had invited the area high schools, so area high schools local to Stuben to come in and talk about whether they were interested or not in having students work with the Shellfish Committee in their conservation activities. Um, at that meeting, uh, Susan Walsh from Sumner Memorial High School took up the took up the challenge and said, "Yeah, we have a program at, at Sumner called the Pathways Program, and I think this would fit in really nicely with the work those students are doing." Um, and as Bill said, uh, Steuben Shellfish uh, Warden is Mike Pinkham. He's also the Shellfish Warden for Coolsboro. He became invested in the project um, when he found out he's been involved with schools for a number of years. Um, on the school board and found out that there were actually other students not only in the Pathways program but other students in, in the high school at Sumner that needed to meet some science standards that would also benefit from being involved in this project. So he became invested and he encouraged the Goolsboro Shellfish Committee to participate. So we basically got both shellfish committees on board, Sumner was on board and we went from there. It turned out um, that some, uh, Steuben and Goolsboro were really good fits for this project because they've already been actively involved in a lot of conservation activities with their committees. Both towns had already signed on to work with Downey's Institute with Kyle and his uh, hatchery seed and protective netting project. And they'd also both already started working with raised boxes to try to capture and find out where wild seed settlement was happening in their towns. Um, so it was a really good fit. Uh, for both those towns. And as Bill said, Goolsboro also had this abandoned lobster pound that we could use as sort of our test site um, to test a lot of the methods that the kids <coughs> wanted to think about and use. And the thing of it is, um, my job as an area biologist, one of my jobs as an area biologist, is to assist towns in whatever conservation activities they want to undertake. Um, and both Steuben and Goolsburg had already demonstrated they were open to trying new techniques and tools. And this kind of fit in with what we were already doing, but it also allowed us to explore some ideas that we didn't have time to do on our own simply because manpower wasn't enough um, with the size of the committees. And, you know, there's only one of me to cover 20 towns in eastern, Marsh, eastern Maine. So, you know, you, your time is limited for what you can do. So having these schools come on board is really essential if you want to broaden out the kind of conservation activities that you can do in your town. And it's been really exciting for me to see the involvement of the students in this project. They've really become engaged. And there's a lot of different places where the kids could uh, find their own path to what interests them the most. You know, when we were talking about the lobster pound and, and cleaning that up and setting it up as sort of a, a test site or an experimental site, um, you could see the kids get really, some of the kids really got involved in the engineer and design of uh, building a new gate for the pound to hold water within the pound. You know, they were able to demonstrate some skills that you don't, you're not often able to demonstrate in a traditional academic setting. Um, to me, it showed that a lot of those kids had the exact same skill set that fishermen have. A lot of fishermen have that natural ability to take materials that are on hand and rig gear for a specific purpose for what they need to do. Um, and these kids demonstrated that exact same skill set. And that's not something you're going to test on a standardized you know, SAT or whatever that a kid has to deal with in high school. So it's nice to see those kids be able to shine in a setting um, that is school but is a little bit different from the traditional academic setting. 
Um, beyond, uh, as Bill said, beyond connecting students with real world science and giving communities information that they need to manage uh, shellfish, I think a big benefit that I see with this project is that the students became aware of how shellfish are managed. They're seeing how a resource is managed locally. And because we have this co-management system in Maine where municipalities work with the state to manage shellfish, you know, we have a unique situation here. And from my perspective, the more people that are knowledgeable and engaged in how that process works, the better it is for us all. Um, these students may never become shellfish harvesters. You know, we had a lot of students come through this program. At one point, we did a clam population survey, and there were more than 50 kids involved. You know, they're not all going to become shellfish harvesters. But some of them may become selectmen. Some of them might be a town clerk. Some of them might be shellfish wardens. And certainly, they're all going to sit in town meeting and have to vote on your shellfish budget. So the more information they have and the more knowledge they have about how shellfish management actually works, the better for all of us, I think. Um, so this has been a very, a very useful and interesting project to be involved in. I think as we move forward with it, you know, we're going to be, uh, this was our first year, so we actually treated this like a pilot project. We didn't always know where we were headed with it. And a lot of things that we tried didn't necessarily worked out the way that we had expected, but a lot of other things worked out far better than we expected. Um, and we want to move forward with what we learned this year um, and you know, continue the work with Sumner and hopefully reach out to some other communities and see if they'd be interested in doing similar work in their own towns. Um, I do want to encourage you to note that later on, um, after this session is over, the Stuben kids are going to be setting up poster displays in the back of the room that's going to describe the work that they did in 2017. And I hope you all take the time to go talk with them and, and hear from their own words what they thought of the project and whether they found it useful or not or interesting and engaging. Um, I certainly did. Um, so, Phil. I just want to make that point again. So oh, we have a break uh, coming up about 10:45. Students come in, set up their posters then, and then uh, over lunch, the poster. It'll be four posters, and they'll be uh, in the back of the room. Uh, if you're interested, please do stop by, ask the students what they learned and what's going on. And and again, uh, if this is something that makes sense for the you, you come talk to Heidi or me, and we'd love to. We'd love to begin working with you on, uh, and, on growing this out so that more town, towns are involved in it. Do you have any questions? Anything? Do you have external funding for this project or was it all volunteer? The question is whether there is ex external funding. And I, I want to thank you for that because I'm supposed to say that and I forgot. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, not a lot, but we did have some funding from the Almina B. Sewell Foundation that paid for my time so that I could actually be involved in this and, and be running around making all of those connections. And uh, we, we appreciate their support. Mm -hmm. and, th and thank you again for the question. Any other questions? Yes? Has there been interest from other grade levels was the question. Yes, and one of the things that uh, Sarah Kern of Gulf of Maine Research Institute and I are working on are ensuring that this actually works at the middle school level as well as at the high school level. Other questions? Okay, well thank you.